It's James Murray here in the Net News Ledger Newsroom. We're joined today by Shane Judge, and Shane has declared he's running for mayor of Thunder Bay. Shane, you chose Mother's Day to declare. It's now the day after. You've had a good day. Yes, it was a good day. I had my wife there. Our son is actually just finishing university, so and he's off on a trip. So he he we were emailing back and forth. Uh, he's wishing mom ha happy Mother's Day, and mom was thrilled that I decided to go ahead and throw my hat in the ring. A little bit of political trivia. The last person to launch a campaign on Mother's Day was Nishinaabe Ashke Grand Chief Stan Beardy yes, when he wanted to run for Ontario Regional Chief and he won. Well, there you go. Let's hope. So, Shane, what do our readers and viewers need to know? Election campaign is underway. Shane, you're running for mayor. What do the voters need to know about you? Well, uh, I think one of the first questions for some people will be, well, who is he and why is he running for mayor? Was he qualified? Well, I'm a reporter. I'm retired now. Worked for CBC Radio and the Chronicle Journal. 30 years covered City Hall. Seen a lot of people walk through those doors and out of those doors from Walter Asif to <laughs> you name it. Uh, and hours and hours and hours sitting through committees mm -hmm. and free of information requests. I think I know what goes on at City Hall as far as the public's concerned as well as anybody. Don't know what goes behind on behind the closed mm -hmm. doors, but we uh, know from some of the fallout that not always good things happen there. And, and that was what I found interesting in your campaign launch is that you said, I'll pay attention. What do you mean by that? Well, I'll cite an example. Uh, you remember back in 2012, the, uh, just before the last election, city councillors were all caught up in the proposition of building a new event centre. Yes. They spent millions of dollars getting design work, lobbying governments, buying properties, getting everything ready to go. And right in the middle of that effort, around 2012, we had the big storm. Yes. And it uh, destroyed the sewage treatment plant and it cost sixty million dollars to repair it took years to do mm -hmm. and we didn't find out until w the repairs were mostly done that the insurance company that the city has was only going to pay fifty percent of the cost mm -hmm. and we had to launch a lawsuit uh, against our own insurance company to tr try to recover the other thirty now i went and looked at the lawsuit itself mm -hmm. that the city launched i went to the courthouse and what I found is that the city admitted that they had not appointed an engineer, somebody to watch specifically what the insurance company was doing, what the contractors were doing to protect the city's interests. And in fact, in effect, the city said, well, we're going to have to fall on the mercy of the court because there's no, not really a paper trail here for us to make a great case against the insurance <laughs> company. So that's what I mean by paying attention. City council were distracted by the whole event center process. But when the $60 million damage was done to the, the sewage treatment plant, the important thing, mm -hmm. nobody paid attention. I promise I'll pay attention to that kind of thing. And that's, that's probably something that a lot of people don't understand in the political process is that a lot of these things happen, and we all think that we've got a council and a mayor who are doing just that, taking care of all these details and an administration that costs a lot of money. Well... My feeling, having watched this particular council compared to a lot of other councils, uh, back in the day, the old councils really knew where the sewer lines were, where the water lines were, where the problems were with the basic infrastructure. Nowadays, it's my impression, we have councillors who are off riding hobby horses in various different directions mm -hmm. with various interests, and nobody's paying attention to the basics. Nobody's looking after the really not really fun stuff but making sure that things work, that the roads get fixed, the that there's a schedule, that there's a basics. And so I have a problem with their ability to focus on what's important. I think the evidence is there again and again. So do you feel that is the mayor, that's the leadership role? I think absolutely that's the leadership role. The, the mayor isn't the guy that goes knocks on uh, sub-lieutenant's doors. Uh, that's all done through the chief administrative officer. but. The mayor makes sure that he has his eye on what's going on and will ask the CAO, will you look into that? Mm -hmm. I want an answer. And we don't see many reports coming out, oops, oops, 
oops. We don't hear those oops reports. It's largely covered up. The mayor uh, has the responsibility to be watchful, to, to watch for problems, uh, to listen to people as well about the complaints, but to watch internally what's going on beyond the chief administrator. And that's what I'll bring to the world. And as a reporter, I have to say that I'm perfectly suited for that because that's what I looked out mm -hmm. for for my 30 years. I looked out for the things that just didn't seem right, and I often found a news story. And that's, that's sort of how it works. Now, sometimes what we find is that if you dig too much dirt, there's a lot of people get very offended. Well, that, that's what happened when I uh, did a Freedom of Information request. You may recall they sold the municipal golf course mm -hmm. to a developer for some $600,000. They refuse when I ask to say, to let me know who were the other bidders and how much they bid. Right. I had to go through Freedom of Information to get that information. When I finally got it, I uh, wrote a letter to the editor and said, listen, here's what went on. There were other bidders offering more money. And I also asked for the final contract. Now, the developer promised he'd build a golf resort mm -hmm. if he won the right to, uh, to buy the property. In the final contract, that was never written in. All mm -hmm. it was was a purchase and sale agreement that the developer could do whatever he wants. Well, there's no resort. It's been four years now, and I'm not sure it's ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> And I, I often thought when that was going through, they were talking about, you know, with our aging population, municipal golf course was perfect for seniors because it was more flat, it was level. You know, and if we're going to have the city's going to have a golf course and have a housing project around it, what better place for a senior who's a golfer? Well, there is that. I mean, I, I, I upset. Uh, I mean, lots of seniors were upset that they were changing the use of the golf course, and uh, the city hall was upset that I had exposed the the fact that there uh, there were higher bidders. Uh, that I tied it to the fact that these other bidders were prepared to build housing. The city said, "Whoa, wait a sec. That would be bad planning to put housing that far out." Yet, a couple of years later, you know that they uh, allowed a subdivision that's about a mile and a half from the main sewer trunk. They insisted the developer put sewer lines in front of each individual house, but it's not connected to the city's sewer line. That could be 10 years from now. So, so you let developers in one sense go ahead and build mm -hmm. maybe where they shouldn't be, but others, that's ah, okay. So lots of paying attention. Lots of paying attention. So as we go forward, Shane, um, you're going to have, what would you say the main thrust as you start your campaign. You talked about the ward system. Well, yes. Uh, well, th there is that side of it. Two things. First one is uh, I'm calling for a much more focused council. I think we're over-politicianed. I think 13 <laughs> is too many. I think all we need is nine. And working a ward system with nine is really problematic. The fact of the matter is that 50 years ago the ward system perhaps made sense. But nowadays we have master plans for everything from stormwater management to recreation. The old horse trading days are gone by. Mm -hmm. Now it's a matter of making sure we have our finances in the big picture squared away and then following through on the plans. In my view, the ward system is redundant. It's mm -hmm. expensive. They want to go now, for example, to televising ward systems. Yeah. I, I just don't think the payoff is there for the investment. So, And as well, one last thing. The province changed the rules. You right. no longer have to live in a ward to run in a ward. Right. You can come from anywhere. So I say, what's the bo what, what's the point? So we just have councillors at large, or councillors. Just eight eight councillors at large and a mayor. I think we're going to save a little bit of money. But what it does is it sends a signal to the rest of the organization. Listen, we're all going to have to cut. Mm -hmm. Those cuts are coming. And as we go along in the campaign, I'll be explaining a little bit more where I think we can cut more from administration. Not frontline services. I think our frontline services are minimal. I mean, we could be doing a lot more in recycling and the rest of us. The city yes. says we can't afford it. But I think that, uh, that there are things that we can do. For example, I'll throw okay. this up. This is n new. Okay. T-Bay Tell, Thunder Bay Hydro, the Social Services Administration Board, Police Department, and the city. They all have HR departments. They all have IT departments. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't you create a, social, a service agency that provides HR and IT and other back office services mm -hmm. to all of them and cut out a lot of managers. It's an idea yeah. that should be explored, but it's one that I have that I think I would look very hard at, at cutting costs. This is sounding like we're going to head into a really, really interesting campaign for Mayor Shane. Yes. Um, I thank you for coming in. I want to get you in a lot between now and voting day. Sure, look forward and, to it. Uh, 
this is James Murray with Politics 2.0. A little more than a sound bite and a lot of questions. And if you have a question that you'd like us to be asking one of the candidates, just email it in. There's the address, and we will sure get it. And thank you for coming in. Thank you, James.